If you're struggling selecting your subject using Lightroom's subject mask, don't worry, let me show you how we can use the much more powerful objects selection mask to create perfect selections even with tricky situations like these. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process, so we're going to crop this image first, clean it up and turn it into this final image. So as always, if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. First off, there is way too much going on. So to make this composition more focused on our subject right here, I'm going to crop it heavily. I want to turn it into a vertical shot. So I'm taking out a big chunk of each side. And of course, I'm trying to keep the subject nicely centered. So that is looking much better. But of course, since we have heavily cropped image, now we can see a lot more noise in this image because the whole image got blown up a bit. So what we want to do is we want to go into the details panel and click on denoise to apply Lightroom's AI denoise. And once we're done with that, we can now start cleaning up this image. So go ahead, open up the remove tool and we want to use the remove mode and make sure to use generative AI. So what I want to clean up is some of these branches crossing each other because every time there is a branch overlapping another branch, it makes the whole thing look a little bit more chaotic. And I really don't like that. So let's start with this one right here. I'm just going to brush over it. So like this. And I'm cleaning branch by branch so I don't select everything at once. All right, and with the image nicely cleaned up, we can now start working on the basic adjustments. So we're going to open up the basic panel right here. And I want this image to look super vibrant and colorful. Therefore, I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape because this will bring up the base saturation already. Then you can also notice this shot is a little bit too dark. I'm going to change it by bringing up the exposure always paying close attention to the histogram because I want to make it brighter, but I don't want to introduce any clipping. I would say let's go with something like this so we still have some room to play around with in the brighter areas. I'm also going to bring up the shadows, making the darkest parts brighter. Let's bring up the blacks for the same effect. And I do want to bring up the whites. So again, pay close attention to the histogram to not introduce clipping, but that's looking pretty good so far. And I do want to work on the white balance. Let me bring it up just a little bit. So something like this, just to get a more neutral base image without a blue color cast. Finally, I'm also going to bring up the texture, which will make the image look sharper. At the same time, I'm going to drop the clarity to add a very subtle glow on top. And I think I'm also going to drop the dehaze for the same effect. All right, I'm not touching vibrance or saturation. I'm going to target the colors more specifically later on. So that means that's it for the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick and you can see that is a huge difference. Looks much cleaner. We do have a lot more details because the whole image is a lot brighter. Now let's focus on areas locally using masks and let me show you the objects selection method. Open up the masking panel. Let's say you want to make the subject pop. The very first thought you might have is to just use the subject selection mask. Unfortunately, this mask does have its problems from time to time, as you can see right here. It's not only selecting the bird, but also the tree branch it's standing on and some parts in the background right here. So this mask is pretty bad, but there's another way with which we can select the bird. So create a new mask. Here we want to choose select objects. Now it's really, really important to not use the brush select, but instead use the rectangle select mode because this will give you better results and it's much easier and quicker to do. Because with the rectangle select mode, all we need to do is to draw a rectangle around our subject like this. And you can see we get a really, really good selection of the bird. Now, if you want to further fine tune the selection, I can add another objects mask. Let's see if we can target its claws right here. That did work quite well. I'm not too worried about the tail feathers, but if you want, you could, of course, use another object selection and keep on selecting the bird's feathers in the back. And just like that, we have the perfect selection for our subject using the objects mask. Now we can start working on it. 
What I want to do right away is to make the bird a little bit brighter so it stands out from the background. I'm going to bring up the shadows which will make the darker parts of the bird brighter. But I'm also going to bring up the whites to make the brighter parts brighter. Again we need to check the histogram every now and then to not introduce clipping but that should be good for now. I'm also going to slightly tone down the temperature because I have a feeling the bird is a little bit too warm at the moment. And what I want to do as well is to make the bird really, really vibrant. So I'm going to push the saturation a lot. Let's go with something like that. I really like how this is looking. And we can make it look a bit sharper by using a bit of texture. Just keep it a little more subtle here. Let's go with five. All right, that's looking great. Let me turn off this mask so you can see the difference from before to after. Much better. Now that was the obvious use for, a ob for the object selection. But let me show you a different use. At the moment the bird is still not really separated from the background and I want to change that. So I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm targeting the background in the bottom area of the image. Of course using this linear gradient we are now overlapping the bird. So that's a problem. What I'm going to do is to subtract an object mask again and just draw a rectangle around the bird. And now we can work on the background without affecting the bird. So I'm going to bring down the exposure which will make the background darker but of course not our subject which in turn means we will make it pop. I also want the darker parts of the image to feel colder so I'm going to bring down the temperature slider introducing a very heavy blue color cast in this area. Just adding a little bit of color contrast between the cold blue background and the yellow part of the bird right here. That's looking great. Right away I want to further work on the bottom part of the image because we can make it a lot darker. I'm going to use another linear gradient. I'm not going to bring it up as much because I want to have a more natural gradient from dark to bright but that should be enough. Now I'm going to drop the highlights and the whites all the way down instead of dropping the exposure because I really don't want to make the darker areas in here too dark and bringing down the highlights and whites just will help with that. I'm also going to further bring down the temperature introducing a more heavy blue color cast in here and another thing I want to do is I want to bring down the texture and the clarity which will make those blurry areas even blurrier. Let's bring down the linear gradient a bit like that. Okay. I want to add one more linear gradient for the very near foreground somewhere around here. And one more time let's bring down the exposure in this area. And let's bring down the temperature. So the very bottom of the image is the darkest part as well. That's looking great. I do feel like making one side darker as well. We can see the light is coming in from the right side because the right side of the bird is brighter. That means I'm going to use a linear gradient coming in from the left side. Because we can now make this darker without making it look unnatural. Of course we are again overlapping the bird so we want to do the subject select objects mask thing again. Draw a rectangle around the bird. Perfect. Then what I'm going to do in here is to bring down the exposure and let me also drop the highlights and let me drop the temperature making the darker left side a little bit colder. Alright, beautiful. Of course we can not only introduce shadows, we can also introduce light so let's do that. I'm going to start with a radial gradient and of course the light is coming in from the right side so I'm going to place this radial gradient on the right side. I'm going to place the center outside of the image to get a more natural effect. Let's make it nice and big like this. And again I don't want to change the bird so we need to subtract another select objects mask, draw a rectangle around the bird, right and then I'm going to bring up the exposure. So like this maybe. I'm going to use another radial gradient right away to add a more specific glow effect coming in from the right side. Again let's place the center outside of the image and let's overlap the bird a bit like this and again subtract an object mask to get rid of the bird here. And one more time let me bring up the exposure this time I'm going to raise it quite a bit more, again paying close attention to the histogram. 
I really love this highlight effect, but I still don't want to introduce any clipping, so let's go with something like that. Let's also bring up the blacks, making that part in the background a little bit softer. And we could even use a bit of dehaze for that. Alright, beautiful. Then there is one more thing I want to do. There is this tree branch this bird is sitting on, which I want to change as well. So I'm using another object selection. Draw a rectangle around that tree branch. And I'm going to subtract a linear gradient. What I'm going to do is to target the highlights in within this tree branch. So something like this. The bird's claws are selected as well, but I don't really care about that. What I'm going to do next is to bring up the exposure, making the brighter area of the tree branch even brighter and thus giving this whole thing a little more depth. I'm also going to bring up the whites, but that's it for the masking adjustments. Let's compare to before. That was our image after the basic adjustments. And here we have targeted areas locally to nicely transform this image and make our subject pop. Now let's continue with a little bit of color grading and then we're almost done editing this image. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I want to start in the luminance tab this time. Here we can make the yellow parts of the bird a bit brighter by bringing up the yellow luminance. But beware of clipping once more. I just want to raise it a little bit. At the same time, I'm going to bring down the blue luminance, making all blue tones in this image just a bit darker. I just think it looks better this way. Then in the saturation tab, I want to tone down the orange saturation. Let's also bring down the yellow a little bit and the green tones. I just want to balance things a little more in here. And I do want to bring up the blue tones because I really love the blues of this image. That's looking perfect. Now let's also use a bit of split toning in the color grading panel. I'm going to use the midtones and the shadows to make the blue tones more intense. So let's start with the shadows. Set up the hue and very gently bring up the saturation. Done. Let's also go into the midtones, do the same thing, set up the hue and bring up the saturation. All right. Then I'm going to head down into the calibration tab as always. I am going to boost the blue saturation and for this image I also want to boost the green saturation and let's bring up the red saturation. Beautiful. And of course we want to sharpen this image. So let's go into the details panel, bring down the radius, increase the details, hold on the alt key while applying some masking like this. And let's increase the amount of sharpening and there we have the final image. Let me know what you think about this technique, if this video was helpful and you want to support this channel, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. It would mean a lot to me and thank you very much for watching this video.